Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody emailed me asking questions about they they keep reading about paths and subpaths. And so this is a rectangle on layer one. We're going to go to object and we're going to convert it to a curve. When we do that, when we take the shape tool, we get a starting and an ending arrow. Basically, this is the direction. And if you're a laser engraver, this is the direction of the cut. It would go in this direction because of that arrow. They asked how you could get it to this side. If you were doing a bunch of name tags and you wanted to have it end or start, you know, in a certain spot, well, there's two ways you can do it. You could mirror it and then your arrow's here. Now, if you select that node and you right click, you can go to reverse subpath and now it's running in this direction. But how do you get it over here or down here without doing that. Well, what you can do is you can select on that one, right click on your mouth and break it apart. Now you have the path starts here. These nodes are separated, but in, for lasers and gravers, it won't really matter because it's still gonna start and cut in that order. But now we have it at the bottom. This would be very beneficial. Let's make a duplicate of this box, holding down the control button, and then let's mirror it this way. And I would never suggest starting in the, in the center, but when the laser cuts this, it's going to be right there. It's going to jump there. If you did not do that and we mirror it this way and actually this way again, this one is going to cut stop here, but when it starts cutting this one, it's gonna to have to go all the way down here. So it's dead time travel, even though the laser is gonna run pretty fast over there. So if you do all your cutting like this, and let's just make a scenario, let's move this thing back. So both of them are in the same area. And you could even close this curve by right clicking and to close. Now it won't. Well, it didn't do it. Let's back up here. Let's shift select both of them and then close curve. And now you don't have a starting and stopping point, but you do, it's still there. So both our short starting and stopping points are there. I'm gonna right click and close the curve. So they're right there. If we make a duplicate of this, control D, and move it over here and then mirror it this way, your laser is gonna start and stop. And if you were doing a lot of these, it would actually save you time right here in this corner. So when the laser finishes one, it's gonna to go to there, go to go there, go to go there. And also, you've also gotta think about, you know, which one is it gonna cut out first? And it, that, scenario doesn't really matter in this case, but we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and get rid of our text and we're going to go to Windows, Dockers and Object. And you can see all the different layers and we'll open up this layer and there's our four curves. It is actually going to cut this one first, the laser. And I shouldn't say that because in Epilogue's print driver or an Epilogue laser, it's going to cut that one. Then it's going to and it doesn't really matter because it's starting at that stop. And then it's going to cut this one and this one. So that doesn't really matter because it's still going to start right there in the center. So I hope that answered their question. And thank you for watching.